today we're going to talk about where to find some of your forms for your internship experience and also how to get them signed. Originally, it would be you'd print off the document and you'd meet with your mentor, but now that we live in kind of a different environment, it's helpful to be able to ship those off and uh, via email and have them digitally signed. That way you don't have to sit there and be in the room with your mentor at the time in case you forgot, or it's actually much easier to have that signature page ready to roll if you uh, for uploading if you have the digital signatures instead of having the physical paper because then you have to scan it and do all those things. But here's an option where you don't need to do that. So here I am in D2L. This is what the current version looks like. In my courses, you'll need to find your internship experience. If your internship is one semester, it will probably show up here in this little uh, widget or whatever. If it is a multi-semester experience, for instance, the administrative endorsement lasts around two years, it won't be probably visually on the screen when you first log in because it defaults to the term that you're in. Instead, you'll go here probably to the left or right, and you can click on wherever your um, course is. So mine's admin semester, so it creates its own semester. It has my cohort listed, and I'll just click there, and it'll take me to the course. Now, the bulk of the things that you need to know are the contents tab will tell you where, how host all the forms and things that you'll need, and then the evaluation tab will allow you to upload them for viewing and to prove that you've done what you need to do in that whole thing. Let's look at the content section first. So when you first log in, uh, the first section is information only documents. Uh, I'm obviously using an old internship handbook, but yours will be updated. Do yourself a favor and read the internship handbook. When you first start the program, it seems very overwhelming. There's lots of hours. Um, even if you're in the semester course, it still is just kind of foreboding. But read the internship manual because it can help you organize and structure your activities, particularly if your program has recommended or required activities, I should say. That way you can start making sure that you get those in a reasonably organized fashion instead of you get all of your hours and then at the end you have to decide, oh wait, what do I want to represent for this and that whole thing. It's kind of a mess. So do yourself a favor, read through the internship handbook the very first weekend or the next weekend that you enter into the program and it'll make your life much easier because it can give you some idea of how to structure that information. Now, You'll notice that on the left side there are little tabs for different sections and the nice thing is they're organized in this course anyway by time. Your version may look a little different but it will tell you when you need to set these things up, when you need to fill them out. So I'm in this pretend scenario at the very beginning of my internship and one of the big things that you need in the beginning is the memo of understanding. What I'm going to do is open this and then download it. I'm going to take a little tangent here for a second and say, do yourself a favor in your documents tab and make a folder for ELPA and then you can put f different folders for all of your classes. This suggestion is because depending on your program, there is going to be some version of an activity where you'll have to share your experiences. If you're in the administrative side, you're going to create an ePortfolio in your final class and having all of your documents and things in one place makes it much easier to find them when you need to prove, okay, I have met this standard here and everything else. Also make one for your cohort. Go ahead and put your cohort number on there because that pops up in a lot of paperwork, um, but having those documents in place really works. Just in case you're wondering, visually speaking, I'm on a Mac, um, but the PC is exactly the same. Go to Documents. I guess it's my documents there. Make a folder for ELPA. Start making folders as you enter into classes. So the very first day of each semester when D2L rolls out what your course numbers are, make a folder for each one of those. And that way you can, it's easier to find things later and you'll thank yourself. Now, we're going to go and work with a memo of understanding in this video. As you can see down below, there are a considerable amount of signatures that are required here. So I'm going to use a program called Signaturely to capture them all, or most of them. There is a written section here. 
some of your documents by the time you enter into the course uh, may be fillable forms and that might make it easier for you to type things in but with only two sections I can actually use the signaturely tool to fill those two sections in myself there's no reason for me to fill them out or to make a form um, that I can't type things in right now it's relatively simple but you may see a form in there that's fillable um, that's for another time anyway let me log out of mine so you can see what Signaturely looks like. So I'm going to go to uh, Signaturely.com and then it'll trade automatically over to app.signaturely.com. The reason that we chose this program as the way to collect digital signatures is pretty simple. If you only send three documents a month, you don't have to pay anything. And since you can log in with any Google account you want and you're going to end up downloading the signed form and uploading it anyway, um, you can just log in with multiple Googles and guess what? You get a lot more free ones. It's exactly what you do to get free trials on about 50,000 other things in your life. So why wouldn't you use it here? So I'm going to log in with whatever Google account makes sense. I'm going to click it again because I threw the button off there. And it'll log me in. The first thing that you'll do is actually set your digital signature. I've already done this, but there's a number of options actually to do that. I can create a signature and there are a few different ways to do it. Number one is to type it in. So if you wanted to just type in uh, George, any guy, so GA, you can do that and then change down through here and pick whatever works for you. And then you uh, agree to sign electronically uh, based on the electronic signature disclosure. Or if you don't want to do that, you can actually draw your signature. If you have a write on tablet, that's really super helpful. That's how I originally did mine. Or you can take a picture of your signature and upload that as an image. So you'll just do that and then upload your initials and it'll be there and you'll be able to post it into documents. It's really simple. It's pretty easy to train your mentors to put their signature in, especially since they can type. So no big deal there. Now let's get to moving into our actual signed document. Three options. I can make a document that only I sign. I can make a document that I can send to others or, and myself, or I can send a document out that only others have to sign. But in this case, I am also required to sign the memo of understanding. So I'm going to click me and others. Um, this is the memo of understanding. They'll see that title. So if you want to write memorandum there, feel free. Uh, you may want to put in an optional message. Please sign this document so that we can begin this amazing experience. I didn't want to put quotation marks around amazing, but you know I didn't meant to, right? So I need to add some signers. If they have a doctorate, make sure you write doctor here. I'm actually going to send it to professors right now um, just because of the fact that it's easy to do that because they'll respond back quickly and I can show you what it looks like once you receive it and what, what you can do with it. A little bonus feature that you might consider is when you have an email from some of your professors, go ahead and log into your uh, ETSU email. And if all of their signatures or, or all of their emails are on one thing, you can actually just click on the names and copy paste their emails in. And that's like super convenient. Take me a second, sorry. Of course it's required, why would I not? And So no matter what you, even if you call your principal Buzz and he's your uh, mentor, he's Dr. Buzz or whatever, uh, or Dr. Roger or whatever his actual name is, make sure you don't be informal here. You wanna be as formal as possible. Um, custom signing order, not really. And now I can upload the file that I just downloaded. Remember when we had um, the Memorandum of Understanding? Well, I've actually downloaded it.
I clicked the wrong, I clicked myself out there. Way to go me. There it is, Memo of Understanding. And then you just wait for it to upload, which takes a couple seconds, no big deal. Also, if you have, if you want to connect your Dropbox, or for us, it's probably best that you connect your OneDrive, you'll be in even better shape because then you can just pull them over and you can download it to your virtual OneDrive or whatever. So now I'm ready to start adding things to my form. There are some text box sections here, so I'm going to click on text, and then I'm just going to click right here, and then I can move the box around. I'm going to assign that to myself, and I can assign whatever... I like Georgia, like I'm in the States, fine, but I like that font, and the country's also fine. And then I'll just add another text box, as long as this is highlighted, it'll keep adding text boxes. And I'll just put that there, and there. Then I'm ready to do signature, so I'll go up to signature. If it's an initial that you need, that's fine. If there's going to be a date, whatever makes sense. So I'm going to do a signature here. And I'm going to assign that to myself, obviously. The other ones aren't exactly a match of who's doing what, so I'm just going to kind of be a little bit spontaneous about who I choose. I will make the internship supervisor Dr. Boyd, because he's doing it for us now. Um, my mentor, I'll choose who my actual mentor was at the time, uh, Dr. Ginger Christian, so she'll go here. Oh, I forgot I have to click here again and then change that one to Dr. Boyd. Otherwise, I just overwrote the one that I had. So there's a mistake that you can learn from. If I just change this name here, it will just change this. So I need to click to add that part in and then add Dr. Pamela Scott. Now, I may or may not know who the university program coordinator is at the time. And generally speaking, when you upload this document, you don't have to know that. But I do have to put in the date. So I'll put that there. And I will sign it to myself. You can see it's color coordinated. And now that all that's in there, I can just click send. Oh, whoops. It said, hey, you made a mistake. So that's good. So I can add one. So I'll do a signature for Dr. Foley. Now she could be the university program coordinator. I'm sure she appreciates adding more work to her plate. So now that I have that, I can hit send. All right, so click through. Sorry, there's a little drop off there. It had a glitch, so we fixed that. Um, thanks for sending the document. You'll receive a copy in your inbox shortly, and you'll be notified every time it is signed. So I'll go back to my documents, and in this section, you'll see things that are what's happening, and maybe I can look to see who's supposed to sign it, or um, send a reminder, edit it if I need to, whatever activities. And so when we come back, when it all comes back, we can pop up the back end of this video and show you how to respond and upload it back into D2L. So you've got all these notifications that, hey, your signatures are done. So... Now you're ready to sign it yourself. You also should have gotten the email for yourself to go in and sign. So I clicked on that email that said review and sign. So here it is. And I'm ready to start signing and doing all the things I need to do. So since I assigned the text box to myself, I'll just put my name in here. No problem. And then the school district, I'll put in whateverville. Tennessee, of course. So this is a lesson. I probably should have extended that text box out a little more. It's okay that I didn't, but you know, for next time. And then all I need to do is go in and pick the date. And this is today when I'm doing it, so that's good. And I'll choose my signature that I already have, or I can do drawn signature, or I can upload a signature, or whatever. I'll choose that one and say, okay, sign now. That's good. And then this date is already done, so I can click Submit. And by clicking Agree, you agree to be legally bound to this document in the e-signature terms and conditions. Now, being legally bound to that document 
is in this sense saying like you're legally bound to try that's all you're legally bound to do not even to be successful or put in any effort just that you agree that seems like a good idea let's do it so i'm going to agree to that and then i'm going to go back to my documents so i should now see that my document is signed by everyone it's just got to wait on my signature for a second to process And now it's signed by everyone. And it's completed. So what are my options from here? Uh, well, I want to view this information. So I'm going to click on this, select options, and I'm going to download it. And then you'll want to name it not at all what I named it. I named it, uh, I just left it as the default name, which is signaturely.zip. So here's what you get when you come out one with all the signatures as a PDF and the second one is the information of the audit trail so it'll tell you when people sign stuff that they did sign it it verifies the signature so what I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna go in to the old ETSU website here go to D2L go to my admin course might take me a second to get there I'm going to go to the Dropbox, and remember how it said Memo of Understanding. Well, when I go here, I've already submitted mine because this is an old... But I'll add two files. They're both in here. I'll add both of those files. And then cross your fingers that you submitted things to the right section. And then you'll click on, yours will say submit and not overwrite. The only reason mine says overwrite is because of the fact that I've submitted this before. So that's it. Create the doc, use the document that's in there. Set up a text box for yourself to put your name and the name of the district in there. Send it off to all the uh, people that need to sign it so you have your signatures. And then when you get it, download it and just make sure you upload it to the appropriate file and click submit. Pretty simple.